Hello, I'm Nora Tarot from the University of California, San Francisco. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm pleased to present a synopsis of our manuscript, which has been accepted to gastroenterology and will soon be in print. The title of our study is Avatrombopog Before Procedures Reduces Need for Platelet Transfusions in Patients with Chronic Liver Disease and Thrombocytopenia. This study provides the results of two randomized control studies called ADAPT-1 and ADAPT-2. The premise for the study is quite simple. We all recognize that individuals who have chronic liver disease and cirrhosis have thrombocytopenia very frequently, and that the severity of thrombocytopenia is related to the severity of their portal hypertension. These individuals are at risk for bleeding, and frequently when they're undergoing invasive procedures, prophylactic platelet transfusion is used as a way to mitigate that risk. While there's no consensus about the use of platelet transfusions, certainly we recognize that it occurs in clinical practice. So the goals of this particular study were to understand if there are alternative to platelet transfusions, as we recognize that platelet transfusions are not without risk. They are in the individual who has platelet transfusions at risk for getting infectious uh, agents, get transfusion reactions, or become refractory to the effects of platelets uh, over time. So there's a need for alternatives, and in this particular study we evaluated the role of avatrombopog, which is a novel oral agent, a thrombopoietin receptor agonist, and evaluated whether this may be a drug that could be used in patients with chronic liver disease and thrombocytopenia who are going through invasive diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. The ADAPT-1 and ADAPT-2 studies were two identically designed uh, studies. Each were placebo-controlled randomized studies that included individuals with chronic liver disease and throm severe thrombocytopenia, which was defined as a platelet count less than 50. All of these patients were undergoing either a diagnostic or therapeutic procedure in which it was expected that they would be given a platelet transfusion as part of their management. In this study, the primary endpoint was the avoidance of platelet transfusions or a rescue pr procedure for individuals who had bleeding. There were secondary uh, endpoints in the study as well, which included the proportion of patients who achieved a platelet count greater than 50, um, as well as understanding the safety of avatrombopod compared to placebo. Now as shown in this slide, the ADAPT-1 and ADAPT-2 study design stratified patients based upon their baseline platelet count. For patients who had a platelet count that was less than 40, they received avatrombopod 60 milligrams daily or placebo, and patients who had a platelet count that was 40 to less than 50 received the dose of avatrombopod 40 milligrams daily or placebo. After screening, patients were treated with study drug for five days. The procedure was performed five to eight days after completing the last dose of the study drug. Patients were then followed after completing their procedure for an additional 30 days. The primary endpoint of the study, as you'll recall, was the proportion of patients able to avoid a platelet transfusion or rescue procedure for bleeding. This primary endpoint was met. The proportion of patients who were treated with avatrabapeg and that were able to avoid a platelet transfusion or rescue procedure was significantly higher than the patients who were treated with placebo. This was true in both ADAPT-1 and ADAPT-2, and in both of the platelet, platelet groups. You'll notice in the figure that the placebo-treated patients also were able to avoid platelet transfusion, although at much lower rate. And the reason that you see this is because although the patients who were enrolled in the study were anticipated to require a platelet transfusion, it was not mandated by the study. The secondary endpoints for the study were also met. The patients who received avatrombopag 
were much more likely to achieve a platelet count greater than 50 than patients in the placebo group. We also, in terms of safety, demonstrated in the study that the patients who were treat treated with avatropopeg had a similar profile to those who were treated with placebo. And that most of the adverse and serious adverse events that were noted were typical of patients with chronic liver disease. Based upon these results, we concluded that avatropopeg was superior to placebo in achieving the endpoints of avoiding platelet transfusion and a need for rescue procedure for bleeding, as well as achieving a platelet count greater than 50,000. Avatropopeg has recently been approved by the FDA specifically for this indication. So this means we now have an alternative to platelet transfusions in our patients with chronic liver disease, thrombocytopenia, who are undergoing invasive procedures. I'd like to thank the editors of Gastroenterology for providing us an opportunity to share our manuscript with you.